Hi Buns, today we're going to go over the ultimate guide to leveling alt classes from 1 to 90 for 2023. Now we're going to blow through this so make sure to hit that like button to give me good pets for the video. Let's start with the levels and then we'll go over experience boosting items at the end. Leveling 1 through 15. An alt class or job at this level, you'll be using the class quest and hunting log. This will give you the quickest XP for as easy as possible. Do not do fate farming, that shit sucks. And so many people try to say this is the fastest way at these level. It's 1 million percent not. Hunt logs are easy and you can do them solo really quick and give you fast experience when you complete them. This also goes for Palace of the Dead. It is totally not worth it to wait for the queue and go in there. It doesn't equal out experience wise. Moving on to 15 to 60. At this point, you're able to dungeon run. Now, this is where opinions start to get wonky. Many used to say Palace of the Dead. With all the changes to dungeons and trusts, this is no longer the way to level alt jobs. There's only one truly effective way, even for DPS, and that's running dungeons. Tank and healers should just do leveling a roulette and then spam the highest level dungeon possible. You can do the other duty roulettes for a variable amount of XP, but I personally just prioritize leveling and alliance and then spam dungeons. Because the queues are so incredibly quick, it's hands down the fastest method. Now for DPS, the question is, do we run duty support, which means spamming dungeons with the NPCs since there's no queue time associated with that, or do we do queue times and do other things in game while we wait? I have my own opinion, but let's go over some tested methods. I ran both with my archer slash bar job for this video. The duty support dungeon of Hake Manor took 22 minutes with the NPCs. I noticed when in the dungeons, the NPC kill time is so incredibly slow because they're putting out way less damage than regular real world players. Another weird thing that I noticed at lower levels that they are mainly single targeting. I did have someone in the discord say that we should single target with duty support dungeons because we will burn down the mobs quicker than us as a real world player AOE. I'll leave that up for you guys to decide. I reran the same dungeon with queue times, took about five minutes to get in and we beat it in about 13 to 14 minutes. Now, I know the queue time is not always going to be that low, but the reason dungeon queue times are fine in my book is one, you can unlock blue quests, level up crafters and gatherers, and do a crap ton of other things while you wait for the queue times. As opposed to doing the dungeon for longer, you're not able to do anything else in that time. It's all about game efficiency for me personally. So regular dungeons is the best way to go in my opinion. Now this may not be true if you're on a slower server or if you're on off times and the queue time is like 30 minutes, then you might as well have just ran the dungeon with the NPCs by that time. But if you are on, on peak times, then I still say queue for the dungeons. There is also a very important tip when dungeon spamming, and that is to use the leveling dungeons and not the post patch dungeons. It is widely accepted that the dungeons that released on expansion are the ones that are made for leveling your characters through the MSQ. Once you hit post patch of that expansion, you were capped out on XP, so leveling in those dungeons didn't really matter during the time. Let's take the example of Orm Vale, which is level 47. It's better to do Orm Vale two or three times rather than do a level 50 post patch dungeon four times. Though that's kind of a bad example because Orm Vale sucks. But this is true for any capped dungeon. But you don't have to worry and figure it out yourself. I've included a link in the description box that will tell you which dungeons are for leveling and which dungeons will be post patch, which are for the 50, 60, 70, 80 roulette. So when dungeon spamming, just avoid those capped post expansion dungeons. From level 60, you should include this, but can include it earlier, but it becomes far more effective as you get later in levels, and that's the Wondrous Tales. You can unlock this in Idleshire, and essentially it is a weekly book that you can complete and turn in for 50% of your experience bar amongst a few other items and rewards. Now be cautious here as this is not as good for lower jobs. I have my archer here at level 36 and when I click into the wondrous tales, it will give me 56,000 XP points to my bard. Now if I switch to my 88 black mage and look at the wondrous tales again, it's no longer 56,000 but 5 million. This just concludes that you should be using your wondrous tales on your highest level non-max job. 
Now at 70, a few things open up for you. Not all worth it though. The first thing that does open up, which is a million percent worth it, is the Pixie Beast Tribes. These are daily and you can get a huge portion of XP from these every day which can help you top off between levels. On my sage job with the road to 80 buff it gave me about just 50% of my XP bar. If you don't have the road to 80 buff it still gives you 25% or so which is huge at these levels. Another thing worth mentioning but I seriously don't recommend if you don't already have it unlocked and that's Boja and Zadnor farming. I personally hate fate farming and Boja Zadnor is basically that in an instance. It also does not take a huge lead in leveling like it used to, and I personally think it's just a big waste of time if you already have finished the story there. It will take you a while to unlock to get the full effect of this, so unless you already have it unlocked, I really don't recommend it. But if you get tired of dungeon spamming, this could be a alternate way to get some easy experience. Now, once you get to 80, this is where duty roulettes can make a big difference. I personally think it's worth doing the leveling and alliance rate on these jobs every day while dungeon spamming for lower level jobs. I really like to maximize that road to 80 buff if you have it. So don't let that go to waste. And since we're here at level 80, there is another beast tribe that you want to include and that's the Arcasador, which is similar to the Pixies and will give you large amounts of XP daily. It's not long to unlock them either, which is nice. This includes everything. Once you get to 80, it will be about every two dungeon runs or so to level up as you get closer to 90. Let's talk about XP boost. For this video, I just had the road to 80 buff, Menfina's earring, and armory bonus since I had a higher level job. FC buff and food. I wasn't even using the brand new ring for 1 through 30 or the friendship circlet if you have it. Again, you don't have to worry about all of these XP buffs. I will put the link down for the perfect website for finding out all the XP buffs available to you since there are many now available since before. The reason I didn't want to include everything is because some people may not have access to those, so I wanted to kind of show you worst case scenario. I've had many people in my Discord that you can join, by the way prove these methods time and time again and get a crap ton of levels every day. I will give one post note. I think Frontlines is really worth it, but I just know there's some people who will avoid PvP with all of their might, so I didn't want to include that in the regular leveling, but you can easily include that as it's a really good way of leveling alt jobs that you don't necessarily want to play. As when you queue into Frontlines, you can change jobs and play the job you want to. So some people who hate playing tank will use Frontlines to level their tanks. This is by far the most efficient leveling method for 2023 now as it just gave a huge boost to dungeon spamming. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube supporters as your support allows me to make these videos every week. If you want to hang out with me, you can catch me on streams, which are Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays here on YouTube, and you can join the Discord to find out all of my stream schedule and times. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy videos or my vast library of guides and tutorials, then you can click here.